So for the common ion effect, the question will be like, OK, I want to do some calculation or I just ask you, OK, how the reaction direction will move. OK, so two different type of question you're going to encounter. One is actually more conceptual. The other one is actually like the, the calculation. Here it shows, the, it shows this example. Assuming today you have a chemical equation of an insoluble salt. OK, AgCl becomes Ag plus and Cl minus with a Ksp given. If today in less solution, I aim something else, and then this species apparently is going to become Na plus and the Cl minus, right? So you will see that it actually generates a species that belongs to your product. Once you add in more product into your solution based on the Le Chatelet principle, which is the system is going to minimize the change. If you dump in more product into your solution, then your reaction is going to move to the reactant side, right? So you actually minimize the change of your product concentration. So let's do the simple one first, okay? So we say AgCl solid become Ag plus and uh, Cl minus. Your Ksp is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. So if let's know sodium chloride add in, okay, we know the Ksp was simply equals to S times S, which is S squared and equals to 1.6 times 10 to negative 10, right? Therefore, we know we can solve the solubility equals to the square root of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And that will give you a value of 1.26 times 10 to the negative 5. There's no sodium chloride adding into your solution. That will be the solubility of your AgCl. So if today you add in 0.1 N sodium chloride, we know sodium chloride is a soluble salt. So if you have 0.1 N of sodium chloride, you know you actually add in into a metal concentration of your Cl minus equals to 0.1 M. When you calculate the Ksp under this case, OK, if you add in Cl minus concentration, make it become 0.1. Then you know your Ksp right now is. Assuming the solubility of your silver is S, right? Chloride minus right now will be 0.1 plus S. You use small x approximation, right? So this will equal to 0.1 times your S. That's going to equal to your Ksp 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Therefore, you know your solubility is going to equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9. I want to compare the solubility of these two. So you can see if you add in more chloride, the solubility of your AgCl become much less, right? So you go from 10 to a negative 5 to 10 to a negative 9. So let's ask again what the Le Chatelet principle has predict, right? If you add in more products, then the system is going to minimize the change of your product. You add in more Cl minus, so it's going to move to the reactant side. OK, so we're going to use very similar concept, but right now we're actually talking about the pH. So every time you see uh, the KSP question that's related to your pH, what it really means is actually if I dump it into a acidic, or sometimes you will say, if I dump it into a basic solution. What I mean to say is, is actually, in the acidic solution means I dump in H plus. And then in the basic solution is I dump in OH minus. If H plus is actually your product for your salt, or the OH minus is the product of your insoluble salt, then this will actually go back to the common ion effects. So let's let's see some examples. OK, first example is actually the solubility. Of the metal hydroxide. So if you have a zinc hydroxide, it has a KSP of 10 to a negative 17. OK, once it dissolves, you have zinc 2 plus and the OH minus. OK, so if today I throw these things into a acidic solution, 
What it really means is actually I'm going to provide a lot of H plus inside your solution. And let H plus is going to interact with the OH minus. In other words, you are actually decreasing the concentration of OH minus. The system will feel like, OK, my product is just disappearing and to produce more to compensate that change. Therefore, the reaction is going to move to the right. Therefore, the solubility is going to increase. On the other hand, if today you say I throw in these things into a basic solution, what it really means is actually I'm going to dump in a lot of OH minus. Since right now you actually increase the concentration of your OH minus, then your system will feel I have too many products. I need to go back to the reactor. Therefore, the solubility of your salt is going to decrease. Second type, today you don't have the metal hydroxide in soluble salt. Instead, you have a salt that you see once that dissolve, it produces a conjugate base of weak acid. For example, the calcium fluoride has a KSP of this, right? And then you, you know once it dissociates, you're going to have calcium 2 plus and 2 F minus. So F minus base negative charge, right? So it's a basic solution. Today, if I actually add in acid, so your base is going to be consumed. So the concentration of base is going to decrease, right? Therefore, your system is going to move toward the product side. OK, therefore, the solubility increase. But if today you throw in your weak base into a basic solution, OK, they don't, they don't actually interact. OK, so if that is the case, then you end up with no effects. So the another situation you're going to encounter in this chapter is that if you have a metal salt where the conjugate base so this anion, OK, is a conjugate base of a strong acid. So what is the, OK, the conjugate base of strong acid is neutral. OK, so if it's neutral, it means it's not sensitive to the pH change. If it's a conjugate base of the strong acid, then the answer is all the same. It's no effect. The things we just mentioned is actually summarized here. OK, so this is actually the ultimate table you want to actually memorize. So you need to know what is the, the anion of the salt you have. If what you have is actually OH minus, then you know you add in acid, the solubility is going to increase. If you add in base, the solubility is going to decrease. However, if today you have a conjugate base of a weak acid, then if you're in acid, it's going to con consume your conjugate base. Therefore, you push the reaction to the product side. Therefore, the solubility is going to increase. But if you're in base, this is that you will actually feel nothing. OK, so there's actually no effects. But if today you have a conjugate base of a strong acid, OK, since it's actually neutral, so it's not going to be sensitive to the pH change at all. OK, so. Compute the solubility of FeOH3 in pure water and compare with a solution with pH at 11. OK, the KSP of your FeOH3 is 10 to a negative 38. The first step is actually you still want to write out your chemical equation Fe3 plus plus 3OH minus and the KSP is 4 times 10 to the negative 38. How would you calculate the solubility of this solution in water? S, 3S. So KSP equals to S times 3S to the third power. And then it's going to equal to 4 times 10 to the negative 38. Is this calculation correct? So in most of time, they, they will be actually the way we calculate it, right? So one thing make the things incorrect is because the KSP is actually way too small, first. Second, the product you have is actually OH minus. Okay, so why does that matter? Because for all our previous calculations, we never consider the contribution from water. 
but water actually also dissociate OH minus because H2O is going to produce H plus and OH minus. And then we know the KW is photon concentration times OH minus concentration that equals 10 to the negative 14, right? So in pure water, actually, you know the proton concentration equals to your hydroxide concentration is going to equals to 10 to the negative 7. For most of the time, 10 to the negative 7 is so small that we always ignore. But in this case, because the KSP is actually extremely small, and therefore you cannot actually ignore the contribution from the water. So what you should write here will be 3s plus 10 to the negative 7. So that we know the KSP is going to equal to s times 3s plus 10 to the negative 7 to the cube. And then we use the small x approximation. Then this will be s 10 to the negative 7 to the cube. There will be s times 10 to the negative 21. That's going to equal to the KSP, which is 4 times 10 to the negative 38. You can solve your s is going to equal to 4 times 10 to the negative 38 divided by 10 to the negative 21. Then you're going to have s equals to 4 times 10 to the negative 17. Okay, let's look at the second question. What is the solubility if this thing is actually in a buffer with a pH of 11? So if you look at these things, pH 11 is an acidic or basic solution. Basic solutions, right? It means you're going to have a lot of OH minus species. And then you should see that this species is actually also the things appear inside your equations, right? So again, it's common ion effects. So what is your OH minus concentration? It says the pH equals to 11, right? That means what? That means actually your pOH going to equals to 14 minus 11. It's going to equals to 3. And we know pOH is actually a negative log of your OH minus concentration, right? Therefore, you know the OH minus concentration will be 10 to the negative 3 power. And then this guy will actually goes into here. So that you know your KSP is going to equal to your solubility of your Fe3 plus and the 10 to the negative 3 plus 3s. So this will be negative 29. 